Hey everybody, I'm Lance Koike. Today we're going to discuss the lactic anaerobic energy system. So this is the third system. We already introduced all three systems and we talked about the aerobic system, the one that requires oxygen, and we talked about the alactic anaerobic system, one of the ones that doesn't require oxygen. And now we're going to talk about the third one, that the second one that doesn't require oxygen or the buffer between our slow aerobic system and our really, really fast alactic anaerobic system. So this system, the lactic anaerobic system, uses a process called glycolysis to buffer our energy development between these two things. So we talked about the aerobic system takes a while to get going. And then we talked about the alactic system is, is short and it runs out really quickly. So what we need is some other system that will help us fill the gap between the two. While the aerobic system is trying to get all its wheels turning, um, we, can, we can have this other system that helps us get up there and hang on until that's ready to go. Um, and it kind of just picks up after that phosphagen system lets go. And that's not entirely true, but we'll talk about that more later. So the biggest thing with the lactic anaerobic energy system outside of the, the whole buffer idea is it, it's, it creates lactate, which we detect when muscles get really, really tired. Now, lactate is just this byproduct so that we can make this glycolysis start again. So uh, how far do we want to go into this? So glycolysis creates this end product. And if we get a lot of that end product, this whole glycolysis system, these steps get backed up. It's, it's like it doesn't want to create anymore. So what this lactic anaerobic system does is it takes that product away turns it into something else called lactate, and that gets shuttled around in the blood. This allows the glycolysis to continue, but we can also use that lactate, bring it to the liver, and create some more energy. It's actually a, a thing of energy. It's not just a waste product. Uh, and it does some other stuff with electrons too, which we can maybe talk about at some point, <laughs> probably privately. Anyways, uh, lactic anaerobic system, the glycolytic system. This is your buffer between the aerobic and the alactic anaerobic systems. This is the one that is creating that lactate. This is the one that is associated with more fatigue. Um, generally, your activities are going to be um, anywhere from 20 to a minute or two minute long, 20 seconds to a minute or two minutes long. Um, and you can usually keep your power output pretty, pretty high. But once you hit about 30 seconds of max effort, like let's say you're on a bicycle and you're pedaling as hard as you possibly can, you're, here's a better, here's a better example. So Usain Bolt runs a 100 meter. Let's say 200 meter. So 200 meter, as you run the 200 meter, the winner of that race is the one that doesn't slow down as much. Okay. Um, and that that's huge because that race is super short. It's like 20 seconds long when you're really, really fast. And it's fascinating to me that those people who don't slow down, those people who are so fast are putting out so much energy that they can't maintain that top speed. That top end speed is only there for a really short period of time. And the thing that helps it not totally plummet off is this lactic anaerobic system. Hopefully that gives you a better sense of what's going on there. Um, we'll hopefully also unmuddy the water as we talk about more and more complexities of this.